What's up YouTube? I am back with another project yet again and I've been making a lot of wide body airliners this year so far. I made the A350 and actually in the previous video I made the Piper Cub and the Cessna 172 as well. But like last year I made the MD-11 which is also a wide body back in the day. So why not add another wide body? To that equation. Yes everybody, this is the Boeing 747, but not just the 747, but the 747-800. The most stretched out and also the latest version of the Boeing 747 to date. And this is in the Atlas Air livery. Well, I wish I could make a 747 in the Cargo Lux livery because then I'd make a video making the Cargo Lux 747 and then dedicating it to Captain Joe, but who knows. And on that note, let's get it on. This model is a commemoration to the very last Boeing 747 ever manufactured on December of 2022 and delivered to Atlas Air on January of 2023. The Queen of Disguise will truly be missed. According to the official Boeing website, the historic 747, dubbed the Queen of the Skies, revolutionized air travel as the world's first twin-aisle airplane and enabled more people to fly farther, faster, and more affordably than ever before. Marked by its distinctively recognizable hump, which is a bit shorter in the cargo variants of the 747, this iconic airplane is a symbol of great engineering, innovation, and often noted as an outstanding work of architecture. The very first 747 flew on the 9th of February 1969 with its introduction with Pan Am on January 22nd, 1970. According to Wikipedia, after introducing the 707 in October 1958, Pan American Airlines wanted a jet two and a half times its size to reduce its seat cost by 30%. In 1965, Joe Sutter, who was known as the father of the iconic jumbo jet itself, left the 737 development program to design the 747. In 1966, Pan Am ordered 25 Boeing 747-100 aircraft, and in late 1966, Pratt and Whitney agreed to develop the JT-9D engine which is a high-bypass turbofan engine used for the original model. On September 30th, 1968, the first 747 was rolled out of the custom-built Everett plant, the world's largest building by volume. The jumbo jet's first flight took place on the 9th of February 1969, and the 747 itself was certified in December of that year. It entered service with Pan Am later that the next year, on January 22nd, 1970. Boeing introduced the Dash 200 version of the 747 in 1971 with upgraded engines. Then there was the shortened 747SP in 1976 with the SP standing for Special Performance. 
and then the 747-300 in 1983 with a stretched upper deck for up to 400 seats in three classes. The heavier 747-400 with the improved RB211 and CF6 engines or the new PW4000 engine which was a successor to the JT90 turbofan in the original 747 and the two crew glass cockpit. This was introduced in 1989 and it's the most common variant that you see nowadays. After several studies, the stretched 747-800, which is the version that I'm building right now, was launched on November 14, 2005 with the new General Electric Gen X engines and was first delivered in October 2011. Oh, and I almost forgot to mention, the 747 is also the basis for several government and military variants, such as the VC-25, aka Air Force One, the E-4 Emergency Airborne Command Post, the famous shuttle carrier aircraft, and some experimental test beds, such as the YAL-1 and Sophia Airborne Observatory. And according to Aviation Monroe, with a projected program cost of over $1 billion, Boeing went all in with the 747. It's important to note that the $1 billion reflects the cost of the 747 program when it was conceived, which was over half a century ago. Damn, we're getting really old now. <laughs> when accounting for inflation, the modern day cost of the 747 program is estimated at over $7 billion. Nonetheless, the Boeing 747 performed incredibly well and was undoubtedly a smart investment for the US Aerospace Manufacturing Company. had a good run but most commercial airlines have since retired the Boeing 747 in favor of newer jets. United Airlines announced plans to phase out the Boeing 747 in 2017. Other commercial airlines have also taken the route by removing the Boeing 747 from service. It's really sad to see an iconic piece of aviation history just being retired and scrapped like that. Seeing all the 747s being scrapped hurts me and the aviation community just as much as everyone else involved in the 747 program way back then. And may I also add the people involved in scrapping the planes too. As I'm assembling the wings here, I want to take a moment to thank Boeing as well as Joe Sutter and the team behind the 747 project for developing this revolutionary aviation marvel, the Jumbo Jet. Aviation would never be what it is today if this plane never came to be. A big hats off to you Mr. Sutter and your incredible team of engineers, the Incredibles, for the wonderful plane.
According to an Instagram post by General Electric, the Gen X engine family has surpassed 50 million flight hours in less than 12 years. The Gen X1B, which powers the Boeing 787 Dreamliner family, has accumulated nearly 32 million hours since entering service in 2012, while the Gen X2B has accumulated 18 million hours since entering service in 2011 on the Boeing 747-8. Oh my gosh, there's an earthquake. There's a slight earthquake. There's an earthquake, y'all. Um, try not to panic. Oh my gosh. Bloody earthquake. Oh my goodness. Uh, Still from Aviation Pros, the Gen X1B engine fan is 111 inches in diameter and produces about 70,000 pounds of thrust, and the Gen X2B engine fan, the version being built here, is 104 inches in diameter and produces about 67,000 pounds of thrust. I love seeing the 747 in this paper model form and this is also the second model that I built that has 4 engines with my first 4 engine model being the A380. There were a handful of moments where I struggled a lot with the fuselage parts and wings but I guess that's just me. Still, I love how the model turned out. I'll give this 747 model a 7 out of 10. And just for fun, here's the Queen of the Skies with Skyflyer. Hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you all next time. Oh,